All right. This one is 212 experimental toggle mixed up or write code practice. Okay, it says for the experimental, we'll do this. For each of the problems below, if you need help, you can pull down the toggle menu or choose associated mixed up code problems. All right, we'll actually just write it. Okay. So it says write code that prints a random number from one to 50. All right, so let's go ahead and start off here. We're going to first find a random number. It's gonna be an int and I'll just call it rand for random number. And then we're gonna assign it the value cast as an int. And then we'll say math dot random. And we're going to multiply that by the max minus the min 50 minus one is 49 plus one, which is 50. And I'll put all of that inside parentheses. And then we're going to um, at the very end, we will subtract whatever the min value was and the min value was one. Okay. Then from here, we'll say system dot out dot print line, whatever our random value was. So it should return a value between 150. Let's see where we're at. Running our code. And I'm sorry, not minus one, plus one at the end. Simple operator mistake there. I don't know why I wrote minus one, plus one. Okay. So we pass our result, all our results. The mistake that I had made was that I wrote minus one at the end here instead of plus one. I make mistakes sometimes. But we got it right. Five out of five. This gives you a random number. That was 30. We run it again. And no, I already got the answer. I'm running it just to see the different answers. One. All right. Run it again. And we get 43. So we've created a random number generator. Well, they created the random number generator. We're using it. All right. It says uh, write code that prints the first two characters of the message followed by the last two characters. Right. These are the same as what we just did, but now we're practicing seeing if we can actually type it out rather than just putting all these pieces together. Okay. So our message is, I hope this works. Okay. And we are going to create a substring. So we'll say string and I'll say part one and I'll assign it message dot substring. And the substring is gonna take the first two letters, zero, and it would take zero, one and stop at two. Okay, I'm gonna copy this code. And I'm going to paste it. I'll line it up there to make it nice. Nope, I'll do that. All right, and instead of part one, I'm gonna call this part two. And what we'll do is we'll take however the message is, however long the message is, message dot length and we will subtract two, okay. All right, so we have part one of the message and part two, and then we'll say system.out.println, and we'll print out part one plus part two, okay. So just to recap what we're doing, we have a substring that takes 
I and then space, and then also takes K and S. Let's run it, see if I messed up. Nope, got it right. All right, so we've completed that one, activity two. Let's move on to activity three. Write code that prints the first letters in first, middle, and last in lowercase letters using appropriate string methods. All right. <coughs> and the first thing I'll do is I'll create a string and I'll call this initials. And the initials are going to be substrings. I'll take first and I'll create a substring and it will just be zero to one. That takes the first letter. And then we'll add on, I'll just copy this and I'll add on middle dot substring zero one, which takes the first letter F. And then I'm just gonna paste it again Instead of first, it will be last, and the substring will be zero to one. So it should, in initials, it should store G, F, J. All right. And then I'm going to, it says it wants it in lowercase. So I'll create a new string, and I'll just say, lowercase initials, I'll say low in it for lowercase initials. Um, and that's just a variable name that I chose. You can name whatever you want. And what I'll do is I'll take initials and I'll say dot to lowercase. And I'll use the dot to lowercase method. And then I'll print it all out system dot out dot print line and we'll print out lowercase initials. All right, let's see if I messed up. Let's run it. Nope, it worked. Good. So GFJ is what it printed out. GFJ. First, middle, last. We had our initials, we took G, F, J, we moved it to lowercase and then printed it out. Moving on, we have activity four. It says write code that prints the message in all uppercase letters using appropriate string method, all uppercase letters. Um, so it prints the message. So I'll say string, I'll say up mess for uppercase message is going to be whatever the message is. And I'll say to uppercase using the to uppercase method. And then I'll print it out system dot out dot print line. And I'll print up, print out up mess. You could name it whatever you wanted. I just up mess. Let's see if I messed up. Nope, didn't. Pokemon, don't Pokemon and drive in all caps. Cool. All right, last one. No, not last one, two more. Two more. Write code that prints the first three letters of the message in uppercase letters using the appropriate string methods. So it prints the first three letters in uppercase letters. All right. So we have our message, right? Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just get the first three. So I'm just gonna call it F3 for first three, string F3. And we'll take message dot substring. And inside here, we'll pass it. So it should take zero, one, and two, and should stop at three, all right? Then once I have my first three letters, 
I'll say string dot and we want it to uppercase, right? We could, we could do this, check this out. We could just say, we could add the dot to uppercase on the end here, instead of creating a whole nother string, save some code. And then we'll say system dot out dot print line <coughs> and print out. Nope, not do that. F3. Let's run it. Let's see if I messed up. And I passed. All right. So I was able to take, rather than writing two separate lines of code, right, I could have just found the first three and then a separate one um, moved it to uppercase, which means like if I go back to this example right here, I could have just taken all of this instead of writing line 11, I could have just written dot two lowercase in that line, but I was going step by step. Um, but yeah, we were able in one line of code to accomplish this. This would also work. Check it out. If I would have done this, if I would have done Right, I had that and then said string. Uh, and then first three, two, upper, F3TU. I don't know. If I would have taken F3 dot two upper case and then printed out F3TU. Right, I still get the same answer and it works, but see how that's two lines of code and that's one line of code. Doesn't that just like look nicer? Just that one line it just looks cleaner too. I have to create less variables to worry about. So I'm just gonna go ahead and comment out, the, comment out those two. And more variable names, the, the least, Sorry, the less variables that you're actually working with, the less confusion that you're going to have. If you have a lot, if you have a, if you have a bunch of code, thousands of lines or hundreds of lines of code that you're working with, uh, variable naming is important. Um, well, variable naming is important regardless, but especially more important if you have to work with it more and more lines of code. All right. So, no, I got the right answer. Yep. All right. So just another way of writing it. I commented out these lines. You don't have to use it. You could just delete it or put it up there. Right, you can comment out lines of code, um, especially if you're debugging. Sometimes it's good to just not delete it, but just keep it and then be able to go back to it later if you really wanted to. All right, last one. Last one? Yep, okay. Write code that, that print. Write code that print. Write code that prints the part of the message starting with, or unless you're thinking code is plural. Um, code that prints the part of the message starting with the word nice. All right, so we want to find the index of dot index of. So we um, will say in for index create a variable and this will be an int. And from here, I'm going to say message dot index of, and you were going to find the index of nice. <coughs> and then we'll say system dot out dot print line. We'll say we're going to print out message dot substring and inside of my open and close parentheses, I'm gonna type in end. So what it will do is it will find the index of nice, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it will find index seven and it will store that as end. So end is assigned the value seven. Then we're gonna look inside 
the message, we're going to find index seven, starting with nice and print all the way to the end. So it should say nice space day exclamation point. Let's see if I messed up. I didn't. Everything was good. It worked out. All right. It passed to print out nice day. It says you have attempted seven of seven activities on this page. Completed. Well done. All right. And that was 212 experimental.